Right, so now that we've created our function to display the percentage, what we need to do is, well, something we should do is probably handle this error condition. So, I don't know, you maybe want to just show an alert or something a bit nicer, but um, upload failed, just so they know what's happened. Um, and they know their files haven't actually been uploaded. But, um, yeah, I guess normally you'd show like a nice little pop-up or something, but, well, whatever. Okay, so, next thing we want to do is actually send the request. So, what we need to do is once we've defined our various listeners, which are these things here, we want to um, call the request open method. This takes two parameters, the first one being the method you want to use, uh, use which is either get, post, or one of the other HTTP methods. So for this we're going to be using post, and the next one is the URL that you want to submit to. So for us this is just upload.php. And then there is one more thing we want to do. Um, we want to set a request header. Um, we're going to be setting the cache control header because we don't want any sort of page caching to get in the way of the information being returned correctly. So, um, yeah, so just here, what we'll do is add, well, we'll set a request header. And this is a header that is being sent to the server, not received. And we're going to be setting the cache control header without that I in it. And we're going to be setting it to no cache. Okay. And then all we have to do is send the request. So request send it takes one parameter, which is the data you want to send. And this is our form data object that we created up uh, here. So this is the reason why it's so easy, because you can just send the actual form data object. You don't have to worry about reading in the files or binary decoding or anything like you used to have to. So anyway, data. Okay, and that's that done. So now, um, I think, maybe, we should be able to test this out. There is one more problem. Because the um, upload progress defaults to display none, we need to set it to be displayed somewhere. And I think the best place to do that is just here, just before you send the request. So we're just going to copy this line to here, and instead of none, we're going to have block. So I think we should be ready to test this out. Um, the file should upload, but we haven't dealt with the response yet, so that's okay. Let's go to our browser, hit refresh, and we'll pick just two files. Uh, actually, let me delete the files in the files folder so we can see if they upload. So let's go to our file, hit upload, and that broke. So files input is null because that's a typo, that should be file. Uh, okay, I'm sure he was screaming at me while that was being done. Try again. Upload. Percent is not defined. Okay, good. Well that means the progress method was being called, which is good. So let's go to here and... Um, percent. Try one more time. Not not going too badly so far. Okay, good. No errors. Um, although you can see that the progress thing hasn't appeared, which is odd, but we'll look at that in a moment. So let's go to our thing. Look in the files folder. No files. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. So I need to spell upload correctly. That's quite an easy fix. That's lucky. So now we should be able to give this a final test. If I just go back to my browser, I'll hit refresh and upload the images. No errors, which is good. The progress bar didn't show, which is interesting, but we'll look at that in a moment. Let's go to the files folder, hit refresh, and you can see we have three files, which is because I accidentally selected one extra. So we have these two files here, and they've been uploaded without the page reloading, which is sort of the point. So in a way we're kind of done, although obviously we need to create the links to show on the page. And because we're not reloading the page, that PHP bit we did in the first part doesn't get uh, executed. So that's... well it does, but you don't see it, so that's not what we want. So we need to create a response that we can use to create the links in JavaScript. So, let's go back to our um, browser, and we'll just test a large file to see if the percentage thing actually works, which it should do. Let's hit upload, and you can see we have the percentage uploading, and then it's done, and the link... well, and that block disappears. 
so that's good that's all working so the next thing we need to do is just work out how to um, sort of get a response from the server so what we're going to do is we're going to add an extra field to the form that if it's submitted by JavaScript so just up here where we create our form data object what we're going to do is add a sort of flag which is going to indicate that this was submitted from the JavaScript not from the actual HTML form so we'll just do data append just say Ajax is true um, or maybe JavaScript well whatever you can pick your own flag and what this will do is add an extra post field to the form that we can check in our script so for example if we come here say if we wanted to know if this was caused by the JavaScript or the form what we could do is add say if not empty post Ajax and if this is true so here we know that the form has been submitted by JavaScript. So what we need to do now is worry about how to get the response. So let's go back to our script and then what we're going to do is add a new event listener to our request object just underneath here that's going to um, be fired or called when the uh, state is changed. So this happens when the request fails or when it completes and it gives you the HTTP status. But don't need to worry too much about what that is. Um, let's just get on with adding the listener first. So request add event listener. Uh, I think that's right. And notice that we're not adding it to the upload because we want the response. And we want to add an event to the ready state change event. Add a listener to that event even. So we're adding a function takes the event as its parameter and then inside of here we need to check to see if the request is completed because this is fired on four, on four occasions, I can't remember two of them one is when it's opened which is zero um, and one of them is when it's completed which is four so we'll check if this ready state is equal to four and if it is that means the, um, the request has completed and then we'll check the status so we'll say if this status is equal to 200 which is the HTTP status code for OK as in everything went fine and then otherwise we're just going to show an error or maybe we'll log an error who knows so inside of here this is where we know that um, the request is complete successfully the files have all been uploaded and we can process the response and add our links Okay, and then down here we'll just do a simple console log, I guess, because it's like an error log type thing. Um, server replied with HTTP status, and then the status code. Except that obviously needs to be quoted. So let's add the quote. Um, this status, and that should be used for debugging purposes. Right. So once we've got um, well, once we've got this, what we need to do is get, um, well, we need to decide where we're going to put our links. So if we look at our HTML, the links go in this uploaded box. So essentially what we're going to do is create this same sort of echo with JavaScript. So let's go back to our script and we'll get that upload box. So we'll create a new variable called links. And this is going to be equal to document get element by ID. And the element name was up, up, uploaded. There we go. So then what we need to do is get our response and for the sake of testing let's just do console.log this response like so. This response is just the raw response that the um, request has retrieved. So if we just go back to our browser we can test this out. So let's hit refresh and we'll upload our file again just keep an eye on the log and oh, I'll pick the big file Okay, and there you can see our response has been printed out and this is actually the raw HTML that makes up this upload.php page which is what you'd expect really we don't want this for our JavaScript though we want something that we can easily process so if we go back to our, um, our well our PHP code what we can do is use that Ajax flag to do something else and we want this array in JavaScript so we can use the file names as we do down here. And the way we can transfer it is using the JSON or however you meant to say that encode function. 
And what this does is it creates, well, it converts the variable you pass it, the data structure, into something that JavaScript can understand. So we're just going to pass in the uploaded array, like so, and we're just going to die with that instead, because we don't want to process any of the rest of this script. Generally, um, you wouldn't really use die like this, but um, this is the most convenient way to do this, so I'm going with it. Right, so let's just do this again, and we'll look at what the response is. So, didn't need to do that, but let's hit upload again. And I've left the big file, which is annoying. And you can see that what we've got is something a lot simpler. It's two square brackets with a string in between it. If I just pick a few files to show you what it looks like for a lot of files, it'll make a bit more sense. You can see that we've got a comma-separated list of file names. And we can convert this into an actual array in JavaScript simply by evaluating it because this is actually valid JavaScript code. So say if I just copied this and went to our script, what I could do is define a variable called, um, well, uploaded, like so. Well, obviously not with that bit there. And that will be valid. However, we don't want to have to copy and paste it. We want to just process it based on the response. So what we can do is instead of doing it manually, we can just use eval, like so. Note that using eval to um, convert uh, JSON or JSON, I don't know how you say it, it doesn't really matter, <laughs> um, convert one of those to an array or object is not really encouraged because it's possible that someone injects malicious code. So for example, if you had a file name that was specially crafted in some way to do some JavaScript, um, that could sort of pose a security vulnerability. However, PHP's encode function, I'm going to avoid saying it um, from now on, um, is one of the trusted sources. So you'll see around online say, people saying don't use a val from untrusted sources, which is obviously quite a good idea, however the this function is a trusted source. So that's why it's okay in this situation. Okay, so now we've got our response uh, all ready and available. I'm going to, um, well, I'm going to leave it here for this part because I've got to a nice sort of break point. So in the next part, we'll worry about adding the links. Okay, so thank you for watching and come back for the next bit.